All right, the young man Steve Davis has been working with, a young man who knows the mean streets of San Francisco. He's gone from the wrong side of the law to the right side of the TV news cameras to produce a very special series of reports. And Steve's here to introduce tonight's installment. Yeah, a lot of the people with whom we've talked have had to say about this that these are things and thoughts that they haven't seen on television. And I think that was the idea. The interviews in this series are selected and conducted by Lamerle Johnson. He collected the information. It's his series, although in this final report he did uh, invite me to participate in a roundtable discussion as Lamerle and his friends sought new paths through the thicket of drugs and sudden violence that grow wild just outside their doorways. Recently there's uh, been rumor that Sunnydale and Hunters Point has made some sort of peace pact. Uh, yes, uh, apparently uh, some brothers got together, cleared their heads, you know, and felt that uh, too many of our black brothers was dying, you know, and came to their senses and just decided to stop the violence. I wonder how many of you will fight as hard to keep it peaceful as it was for you to go at each other's throats. Joe Marshall lives on seeing us succeed. I've never met anybody like him, and I doubt I ever will. Fight! to keep the peace. Because I know you had no trouble beating the hell out of each other over a zip code three weeks before. I was sick of running and dodging, watching my back everywhere I went. If you come to school that next day and you've been up all night, you've been trying to take care of business, you're worried about the police, you're worried about somebody killing you from another turf, and you try to come to school and concentrate, and you can't, and the teacher just tells you you're nothing but a mess up, your skills are low. Is there a magic antidote just to change him around, change her around? I mean, what can we do? This is how I see the game. I see the game. It's like... it, it, um, talking about it, it makes me sad because I want the game to change so bad because even though I'm still, I'm doing stuff like this, I still see it every day. Common goal is money and glamour. That's when you go out and buy your cars, your clothes, and your jewelry, and the girls start flocking around them, and they just love it. They love all the attention that they get. There's a lot of ego in the game, isn't there? Yeah, it is. They get a car, they get some jewelry, they get some nice clothes, and all of a sudden, he's it. She's it. Oh, I've made it in life. This is all it is. I can drive forever. A lot of guys think they become bulletproof. A lot of ego behind nothing, something that kills. Part of the educational process is to get the guy to know, man, you sure are a dummy. You're a horse's ass. You think you doing something, making three or four hundred dollars a day. Your inevitable fate, something is going to happen to you. You're going to get killed. I don't have to prove that to you. Your brother got killed last week, and your cousin got killed the week before. And you are going to get killed, too. The fat cat that's sitting in Medellin, or wherever this stuff is originating at, he isn't taking those kind of risks. I have a perception that uh, young black men and women coming up are getting the impression that it's either high stakes or no stakes. Okay. That your only yeah. shot is to make it big because there's yeah. nothing between that mm -hmm. and nothing. People can, can get a job for four and a quarter, but once that summer job is over, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. What you're telling me is kids coming up here have no faith that that's temporary. They're scared that's going to be it. Because yeah, it's, no, yeah. it's hopelessness. Yeah. There's no self-worth inside, see? So I you mean, don't want to take it the first time yeah. because there's no point. There's no point. Yeah, it's exactly. Not always... It's been my experience that uh, if somebody bothers to shake us and wake us up, talk to us in a way we can hear, that it's always surprising how many possibilities there are for us that we flat never considered. You just don't see them. Yeah. It's like you're blind. It's like someone has a blindfold over your eyes. People from Hunters Point, Sunnydale, uh, Patrell Hill, they had no image of going to college. That's not what they seen. That wasn't the end thing to do. And Omega showed them that. I'd like everybody to give, show me your hands who uh, will be college ready uh, next year. <coughs> Could you stand? All right. All right. Now, if you stand. See, on Tuesday, I want to see all these faces. Because if you don't come here on Tuesday, that means you're not studying. At least I'm not seeing you study. And I'm not... With an organization as effective as an Omega Boys Club, we should be getting lots of support, but we're not. 
We can't ask them to support us, man. They don't owe us nothing. All this money's going into jails and stuff. You know, why can't they give some of that money to us so we can go to college? They will lock us up in a minute if we do something wrong. But do they owe us a college education? Okay, then what are you asking? God, I'm an old man now, and here's a young man. What do you mean, what are we doing? Here's the hope of our community. You called him to, to this work. And it's your business that you got him engaged in. I just invoke your blessing on his life and his work. Someone God would have told me a month before I met you that I could do some reporting or that I would be at Channel 7. I wouldn't believe that because you just don't see it. I'll be the first person in my family to leave the college. This is going to be cool. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, Lamero. And if you would like to join the Omega Boys Club effort to divert low-income kids from the streets and into college, you certainly may by sending a tax-deductible donation of any amount to the Omega Scholarship Fund, 953 DeHaro Street, San Francisco 94107 is the address to which you may send that. Final thoughts, observations? It was very moving yeah, and yeah, a big it lesson. Said everything. It said uh, it said a lot of what needed to be said, and uh, we should credit you, but we should certainly credit Lamero. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he's thinking about television now. He's written some songs about the whole thing. Maybe he'll go do a little acting. He's he's up and excited and ready. And most important, about and college and enrolled. <laughs> yes, That's right. right. Thank you, Steve. Okay.